Rarely do we have a rut where the weather cooperates better than it has this year. Too often the action is rudely interrupted by the furnace-like blast of a prolonged warm front. Instead, this year's rut has had a very enjoyable consistency to it. Sure, there are good days and great days, but not too many bad days. Even as we hit the very middle of the rut's lull, the woods are not completely dead. On the morning of November 15th, Owen Riegler is back after the huge nine-pointer that he calls Uno. Owen selects a tree stand near the blind where he encountered and sadly missed the buck four days earlier. All right, guys, we're back at it here November 15th. Just breaking daylight here. Beautiful mornings, probably 20 degrees. We've got a real light south breeze here. We're hunting on the downwind side of about 30 acres of bedding here that sometimes that Uno will bed in here. He, like I said before, he's pretty sporadic, so you just never know with him, but we're giving ourselves a chance anyway. That's all you can do, but we'll sit in here for the morning hunt and see how it goes. Yeah, that wind's cold, guys. We just had a little flurry of buck activity about 8.30 or maybe quarter to nine was a lot of fun. The one buck out there was an eight that I know he's probably five or six year old buck. I'd have shot him if he came in, but the rest were just young. Ah, it was still fun seeing them. But breakfast is calling my name, so we're going to skedaddle out of here, and I've got a doctor's appointment for my back tonight, so I can't hunt this evening, so I'll be tomorrow before we're back with you. I'll see you then. Owen encounters the same mature eight-pointer for the third time, if only Uno was this accommodating. Owen doesn't believe the buck is dead, but the bow hunter is beginning to wonder if Uno has moved farther away or at least has stopped ranging in Owen's direction with the same frequency he showed earlier in the fall. That same evening, 150 miles to the east, Jared Mills heads to his river farm hoping to see the big 10-pointer he got on his cuddyback camera. A buck, Jared believes, is one of the two big tens that were on the farm the previous season. go. Brad and I are back in the saddle uh, after a successful hunt. It's, we took two days off. We're back in the stand now on, on Mike and I's farm. It's a little bit later in the afternoon. We've uh, been covered up basically since we got to the base of the tree. There was a, a nice young eight. I think he was bedded with a doe, uh, but it was only like 40 yards from the tree, so we had to sit there for a while. And then there's been does and fawns working through since then. 
we're uh, in a spot that Brad and I sat one time already. The big sycamore tree overlooking all the willows and that's the WRP area on my farm. Let's just see what comes out tonight. I would love to see that JJ Marino buck and uh, any other new bucks. You know, we're at that time of year that uh, anything can show up, especially on a river bottom property like this. We got about an hour left and we've seen deer uh, the whole night so far it's been pretty good there's a big framed eight a few hundred yards away at the other end of the the willows he's got a frame really similar to that buck we called Eli last year but I think this is a younger deer we'd like for him to come down here and get a better look he I just went through a gap. We didn't get to see him very, very long. But it's pretty cool to see this deer movement and uh, to see this amount of deer back in here. Jared continues to wait for a mature buck to step out. 60 miles to the east, Warren Dykstra hunts the same stand where his son Matt shot a good buck the previous evening. It is a time-proven stand, one they call the pond set, a perfect funnel between a pond and an open field. We're back in the pond set, one of our favorites stands on the whole farm, especially during the rut. Every one of the bucks that we see, uh, see on the farm at some point comes through here. Matt sat this stand last night. He saw four different bucks and was able to put down the biggest one of the four, so congrats to you, Matt. We were kind of worried about whether to come back in here tonight. We didn't know whether all the commotion and stuff would have messed up the area too bad, but we were coming in we got an access road behind us that we used to get into this stand. Most of the time you're golden, don't have no trouble at all, but every once in a while there'll be a deer bedded in this area. And unfortunately, today that was the case. We got just uh, almost to the, even with the stand on the road, and a big buck jumped up. It looked like he'd probably be at least a four-year-old. We didn't get a real, real good look at him, but he was a definite shooter. We're hoping we got some pictures on the trail camera when we go pull it, but... It wouldn't have really mattered which direction we came in and our, our, what we did because he was bedded within probably 60 yards of our stand so there was no way we were going to get in here but hopefully he won't be the only one that we get to see tonight so we're going to settle in here and hopefully some more will come by and if it's not him hopefully it's another shooter so.
over the hill to see if we can find a good blood trail or not. And if we can't find them, then we'll probably back out and wait till tomorrow to try to recover them. Well, we looked around a little bit for a blood trail. Can't really find no blood. We think it's because of the steep angle of the arrow going in and the fact that it didn't do a complete pass through. So. There's no sense going and bumping around here in the dark, so we're just gonna back out. It's gonna be real cold tonight, so the meat will still be good, so hopefully we'll be able to find them in the morning. Back on the river farm, the action continues near Jared's stand. I don't think so. I don't know how the... Dude, he is an old warrior. I... God, I wish you had your tag. I wish you had your tag. He kind of does have his ears pinned back, doesn't he? What is he thinking? <laughs> dark here so we're gonna wrap things up uh, overall a really good night uh, love seeing a lot of deer I bet we saw mm, I don't know between 20 and 25 maybe and now uh, we did see one brute of a mature buck uh, he wasn't very large rack but man he was a toad I don't know if we could have called him over here or not um, it was almost the same situation with my buck directly upwind and it would have been easier for him to circle and get downwind though uh, compared to the buck I killed the other night but 
Brad behind the camera is uh he moved here this summer and he's so close to having Iowa residency we're hoping he'll have a tag in a few days I really wish he had it tonight and I would have tried to call that buck in but uh, hopefully he'll hang around and maybe we'll come back and, and get after him but we're gonna start packing up and we got a two hour trek back home so probably get going The following morning, Warren Dykstra takes up the blood trail on the nice eight-pointer. good feeling we finally found him we got out here this morning and even in the daylight we couldn't find any blood trail what we're figuring it is is because of the shot angle hitting him a little higher higher from being in the tree stand and the arrow not being a full pass through is why we couldn't get no blood trail so we definitely made the right call by backing out last night he's probably 300 yards from where I shot him he went down through the valley and up the other side so we basically came out this morning and once we couldn't find a blood trail we just started grid searching this whole valley both sides of it and by the grace of god we were finally able to stumble across them so that's a big relief i always feel bad when i have trouble finding a deer much rather have see him go down right away but it wasn't that he, i think he died right away last night but it was just a matter of we weren't, weren't going to find him in the dark so talk a little bit about the stand location the reason we love that stand location so much is you got a big bedding area and that's where he ran into but as it gets up here to the pond, the pond really makes it funnel down. It's definitely our favorite stand on the farm and feel really blessed to be able to go out and share all this with my son and enjoy God's great nature and bring it all to you guys. So we're gonna get them loaded up and get them on out of here. Hunting a small eastern Iowa farm, team member Troy Saxenmeyer has dedicated his entire season to the pursuit of a single buck, one that he has nicknamed Driftwood because of the deer's unique antlers. Well, today's October 12th. This is kind of where my story is going to begin. One deer that I, I think is living just to the north side of this plot, a deer by the name of Driftwood. Today's Friday, the, October the 19th. The deer that I'm after is Driftwood, and I pulled my cards out, my last set here in the redneck, and there's a scrape about 50, 60 yards in front of me that I have a camera on. And uh, he's worked that scrape during daylight, early October on our first big cold front. It's just been a patience game for me, just because I don't have a, I think the way he's moving, there's no place for me to, to hang a set. Well, I think we made it in here clean. Uh, we're playing hardball tonight. We're between two bedding areas, so if everything goes well, hopefully uh, the pattern continues and Driftwood uh, gets out of his bed and tries to move towards this southwest corner of the woods. We got a pretty good view of a lot of things. It's a lot of walnuts over here, so actually the leaves have fallen off. It's a pretty aggressive move for the 27th of October, but like I said, I think this is going to be uh, the right thing to do. Hopefully we get a good encounter tonight. Today is the afternoon of November 11th. First and foremost, uh, Veterans Day. So I'd like to thank uh, those who uh, past and present that served our country. And uh, this is the last spot that I have a daylight picture of Driftwood. This is my sit number 13 for him, 11 of the past 15 days. So zero encounters. Um, hopefully today's the day we get an encounter, get him out here on this food. Troy has many trail camera photos of the buck, but it's not until November 15th that he has his first encounter, right at last light. I 
had me here at about 35, maybe 40 yards there, the very last light. And the camera, the camera was dying and just couldn't put it together. So I'm gonna pack things up and we get out of here and we'll try it again tomorrow. Now that Troy has a feel for the buck's patterns, it is only a matter of time before the two cross paths again. Disgusted with my performance, I remain sidelined, handling business and regaining a little confidence on the backyard range. Like the 18th mile of a marathon, the long season is starting to wear on everyone. Mike Reed continues his relentless quest for Curly, his number one buck. Owen Riegler has all but given up on Uno and is starting to lose his enthusiasm. Jared Mills already has a great buck at the taxidermist, taking some of the edge off the adrenaline-fueled efforts that drove him earlier in the month. Caleb Byers is still after the open country monster he calls Dakota, but with few sightings, Caleb doesn't feel like he is actually in the game. Only Brad Beaver's story is pointing up. With a resident tag only hours away, Brad is the one with a bright red flame of hope burning in his eyes. We will take breaks and catch second winds. Soon that fire will relight in all of us. Soon we will feel the same way we did weeks earlier when we first started chasing November. <laughs>